Welcome to another episode of Breadcrumbs from the Soul, a radio station that's dedicated to finding those hidden miracles in life's everyday circumstances. I'm Reverend Michelle Rado, and welcome back to this fifth episode. The title of today's episode is Finding Love in Every Instant. And we're going to focus on the everyday circumstance of having a neighbor whose dog has just taken a big poo on your lawn and they didn't bother to clean it up and how utterly rude that is. And I don't know if you guys are exactly like me, but I find that to be extremely rude. You put a lot of effort into that grass and they didn't bother to clean it up. So how do you possibly find love in that everyday circumstance. So we're going to look at that today. And to do that, we're going to start with it just like we do in all of our other episodes. Now, hold on, I'm looking for my glasses. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, you know that I'm actually videotaping this. So welcome. And um, if you have not already subscribed, I'm going to hold up a button here. Go ahead and click on this button to subscribe and then you can follow every episode. And for those of you who are just joining, my website is Rev rado.org and at the end of this episode I'll have a little link on YouTube that you can click on to go visit and uh, I would love to see you there. You can also post comments, you can see some of the past episodes, you can see some of the counseling services that are offered so I look forward to seeing you there. Um, but this episode we're going to uh, once again start with a quote and um, the quote that we're going to be using is from A Course in Miracles, and that is from Workbook Lesson 18, and um, that's on page 29 for those of you who might like to follow. And the quote is as follows, um, and we're going to start with a quote, and then we're going to apply the quote to our everyday circumstance of a dog pooing on our lawn, and then we're going to come up with some tools that we can put to use right away so that we can help ourselves to find love in that everyday circumstance. So let's go ahead and start with a quote. And the quote is, Lesson 18, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. And how does that apply to a neighbor who clearly it's rude to let your dog poo on a lawn and not clean it up? So how does that apply? And I'm going to start to add some logic to that by focusing in on some additional words here in the quote, in the, in the lesson, I should say. And in the lesson, it says, the thoughts which give rise to what you see are never neutral or unimportant. And so let's step back for a moment and let's jump into some of our basic concepts, shall we? And a basic concept is that we are so magnificent that we can't even comprehend how magnificent we are, how powerful our brains are. And if we take our brain and we apply negative thoughts within our thought structure, then we are hurting ourselves and we're hurting others. And so let's, let's look at the quote again. It says, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. Okay. Let's put this in a picture. There's a dog, your lawn, you've put a lot of effort into your lawn, and the dog has pooed on your lawn, and the neighbor has not cleaned up the mess. How can, first of all, that's rude. And uh, how can that tiny little hidden thought about it being rude, how can that possibly be something that even needs to be fixed. Why does that even need to be fixed? I, you know, it's a, it's true. It's rude. The dog pooed on my lawn. You got to clean it up. That's not nice. I've stepped in that before and it's not fun. And so let's, 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 let's see if we can listen to this one more time. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. And so what does that teach us? Let's take a step back and acknowledge that our mind 
is joined with all others. So here's the news. We're not separate. So I am not separate from my neighbor. It doesn't matter how much the neighbor irritates me. I am never separate from that neighbor or any other neighbor for that matter. And so our minds are joined. And in being joined, what I see, or in this case, what I think, what I believe is this little hidden thought that nobody else knows about, it's actually not hidden. Who am I kidding? It's not hidden from anybody. And so what I'm seeing is affecting all of it. What I am experiencing, the judgment that I am making in this exact instant right now, the judgment that I'm passing on my neighbor is a judgment that I am issuing against all. You could say against God. You could say against source. Why? Because we're not separate from our neighbor. We're not separate from God. We're not separated in this universe of love. We are of this love. And so this is we are joined. And how do we know we're joined? Well, if you've ever wondered, because I know this has come up in my mind, and I've questioned as I've been reading The Course in Miracles, how is it possible that if we're, if we're separate beings and we're having these experiences and it's all an illusion and I'm having my own illusion, how is it possible that I'm able to experience something and I'm able to share it with somebody else and describe it to them and they're seeing the same thing I am. For instance, I could look at a, a tree and I could say, here's a tree and it's a green tree. And the person that I'm talking to says, oh yes, I see that tree. It's a beautiful tree. It's about six feet tall, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's about six feet tall. And you might be saying, well, it has to exist because a million people are able to describe the tree that stands behind me here that's six feet tall. And if that's the case, it must be real. It's not an illusion. Well, here's the news. No, we have one mind. It's the same mind that's seeing the tree. So of course you seeing what I'm seeing. Of course you see it as green and we understand what green is because it's the same dream. It's our dream. We're not separate. We're joined. And so this is not a hidden thought. And what kind of harm could a thought like this possibly do? Well, let's think about this for a second. Let me ask it to you this way. Do you sincerely like the idea of going home to source? Do you like the idea of finally being completely healed and at peace for all eternity in love? Um, no more pain, no more suffering. Does that sound appealing to you? I know it sounds very, very appealing to me. And it's really, it's my mission is to heal and to no longer feel the pain and the suffering that I feel. So how can I do that? Well, I have to make a choice to heal. And so we have to wake up and make a decision to heal. And how do we do that? Well, we have to stop passing judgments on the neighbor who's letting their dog poo on our lawn. That's how we have to do it. And, uh, and it's not that simple, is it? And I think particularly what I like about this example in this everyday circumstance is that it's a really, really seemingly tiny thing, right? I mean, clearly I would say 98% of us out there do believe it's rude to have a dog poo on the, on the grass. And, um, but no matter how little the thought is, it is still a thought based in something other than love. And therefore, it's a choice that we are making in that moment. And in that instant, we are not seeing the love. 
And here's the news. We have absolutely an infinite amount of time to live in suffering. We could go on another million lifetimes. I have no idea how many lifetimes I've lived. And we could just go on and on and on and on. And we're going to go on and on and on and on and repeat mistakes. We're going to relive fears. We're going to experience pain that we've inflicted on others. And this is going to go on and on and on and on and on until we finally heal every last particle within us that requires healing. And when we heal at that moment, together we go home in peace. And so what does that mean that we go home in peace? Okay, we're going to go over a basic, and this is a Course in Miracles basic, and I know I've already talked about this in previous episodes. We are part of this universe of love. We are part of God. We have never been separated from our loving source that's not possible. We are one and we are dreaming. And we actually do not live here on this planet in this, I want to say, hellish nightmare for those of us who still experience suffering and pain and loss, fear, anxiety, stress, for those of us who struggle with these concepts to change our mind and who earnestly are trying to heal, this is not where we really live. Where we really live is in a state of grace and peace. We are love. We are this universal love. We've never separated from that. And so for us to return to that awareness of our natural state of being, which is peace and love, we have to wake up. And so when I say return home together in peace, what I'm saying is that we wake up. And I can't wake up without you because I'm not separate from you. So I don't get to be more advanced than you necessarily. And I don't get to have that experience of uh, going home to God without you. And so in order to arrive at peace again and to wake up, we have to heal. And in order to heal, we have to recognize what needs to be healed. Okay, so now we're going to get to finding the love that's hidden within every instant. And here's the love. The love is surrounding us in this universe of love that is offering to us in absolutely every instant of our day the opportunity to recognize that which needs to be healed. This is quite literally a all or nothing proposition. To awaken, we have to heal. We wish to be in peace and love. And as we've talked about in previous episodes, and as it goes into great detail in all of the wonderful spiritual books that are out there, that this source, our God, this universe of love, this is an absolute love. There's nothing else in there. And so there is no fear in love. That doesn't exist. If fear existed in love, it's the same thing as saying as if pain existed in love or if anxiety existed in love, it couldn't be absolute love. It's, it doesn't work that way. The world that we've created has pain and fear because we've imagined a place that's other than 
where we come from that's other than our source. We imagine this place and because of that we've created this universe. And what keeps us in this universe are every thought that we have regardless of whether it's small or large, a big thought, any judgment, any thought of anxiety, any thought that is other than absolute love and absolute peace, then is placing a barrier between us and our source. And so to fully awaken, what we're learning is that we have to heal absolutely everything. And so to answer the question, what possible harm could it do for me to acknowledge that it's rude for the neighbor to allow the dog to take a poo on my lawn and not clean it up? Well, the harm is, is in that very instant, I am absolutely failing to recognize the love that I am and I have absolutely failed to recognize the love that is my neighbor. And I am coming once again from a very limited perspective and I don't even get it. Let's look at it from a broader perspective, from the perspective of universal love. My grass might have needed some fertilizer. I don't know. There could be a host of insects that live in my grass that needed to have the dog feces. I don't know. I couldn't possibly understand the utter complexity of the universe that's outside of me. Me, the Michelle, that's speaking today. And so I'm not really the right one to judge. It becomes a question of acceptance and understanding. And so let's go to the tools that we can use. So let's assume that we all really do want to live in peace. We really do want to return home. We want to wake up out of this dream that we've created, this dream of separation. And we want to have this laugh. We want to return back to source and we want to join with ourselves and we want to be the peace and love that we are and we want to extend that that's that's our greatest goal so if we entertain that that's our greatest goal then we have to heal absolutely every little tiny thought because it's not hidden why because as it says in our quote today I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. What does that mean? When I choose a judgment as opposed to love in any instant, I am contributing. I am contributing. I'm not alone in the effects of my seeing. I am contributing to us all continuing to remain in what many of us feel is circumstances that offer suffering pain and I am contributing to that as opposed to contributing to us healing and returning back to the love that we are and so what are the some of the tools that we can use um, as we seek to heal even these tiny 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 little um hidden the the, what we think are hidden thoughts so step one is we we need to be alert and catch ourselves when we are passing judgment of any kind we need to recognize and acknowledge that we are extremely powerful beyond anything that we can imagine and as such these little tiny thoughts actually continue to perpetuate that which we do not wish to continue in our lives other than love so it perpetuates other than love in our existence and we cannot fully awaken as long as there is even a smidgen of anything else other than absolute love and so that that means in our heart in our mind in our in all of our being there cannot be anything else other than 
absolute love. And so to get there, step one is to be alert. And once you have been alerted to the fact that you have anything other than love, so this little concept that you have that you're carrying around this judgment of your neighbor, that it's rude that the dog is pooed on your grass again and they didn't pick it up. Step two is the moment that you become aware of this thought of that's other than love, you want to immediately remember your true purpose. And your true purpose is to heal. And your true, so your true purpose is to be the love that you were born to be, to extend nothing but love into the universe. Why is that your true purpose? Because you are of an all loving source. You cannot be separate. So that is your truth. And so your true purpose is to extend nothing but love. So number one, you're alerted. Oh, look at this. I've had this tiny little irritation about my neighbor. Number two, you know what? That's not my true purpose. My true purpose is not to be irritated and pass judgment. That's not my job. And so number three is you want to offer this thought that you've had, this, this little tiny thought, this judgment that you've had. You want to offer this into the hands of a wiser than you, wiser than the little you, in my case, wiser than Michelle. So my inner teacher, my higher self, Holy Spirit, you want to offer this judgment into the hands of your higher self and you want to ask your higher self to be the judge of what's going on here, not you. Release that into the hands of your higher self and let that go. Just just let that go. And why? Because quite frankly, you have no clue why in this universe that is nothing but love, why dog poo needed to be on your grass. Now it could be that the only reason why dog poo needed to be on your grass was because you needed to learn that even the tiniest of negative thoughts breed anxiety, stress, disease, death, and separation between you and your source and that you might just need to learn that could be why you're listening to this right now. I know it's why I'm saying it right now because you teach what you most need to learn. So I know I need to go and listen back to this tape and learn these lessons. Step four is offer blessings to your neighbor. So number one, you've been, you've become alert. You, you get, you get it. Oh, Oh, there I go again. Number two, you remember your true purpose. It's very important to remember your true purpose. Number three, you offer it into the hands of your higher self, Holy Spirit, your inner teacher. Let let that part of you, because we're all one, your inner teacher, Holy Spirit is not separate from you. Let that part of your mind, which understands and grasps the totality of this universe of love let that part of your mind be the judge of the the neighbor not picking up the poo on your grass that's not for you to do because once again we're human and we're limited to just what we can think of in our own minds and number four bless your neighbor so yes i am saying as you are bending over picking up the poo because you don't want to step on it or you don't want your loved one or your children to step on it or your dog to have an accident in it, then offer blessings and thank them. And here's the important part. Thank them for playing a critical role in your healing, in our healing. If they were not to have allowed their dog to poo on the grass so that you could go through this whole experience, you would not have arrived at this healing place. And so it's a good opportunity to thank them. We forgive. And with that, I hope that you have found this particular episode and these tools useful in helping us to understand 
that we are not alone in experiencing the effects of our seeing. We're joined and we're here to heal and to love and to extend love. And with that, I want to thank you for joining me once again on another episode of Breadcrumbs from the Soul. And we'll be right back again next week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. If you are on my YouTube channel right now, don't forget, go ahead and press the subscribe button and you can subscribe so that you'll get that next episode. And um, visit revredo.org. You'll see a link uh, coming up just about here. So you can go ahead and click on that. And um, I look forward to seeing you. May you have a blessed week. <music>